It all started one day in school, during a PE class in which we were doing the beep test. If you're in batch, you will probably know it's not the most fun, so to say. As we were doing it, I started to feel very bad, though not the kind of bad we all say when we are too lazy to do that test, something different. A weird feeling in which I felt very dizzy. I couldn't really identify it, but I knew something was wrong. As I arrived at the nurse, they measured my heart rate, and it was at 225. A normal one is around 85 to 120 beats per minute for teenagers during exercise. Other people came by and they measured their heart rate too. After a while it had gone down and they started to feel better. However, in my case, there were no signs of improvement. It was at this point when they took me to the hospital and this chapter in my life began. Less than two years ago, I was diagnosed with ventricular extrasystoles and supraventricular tachycardias. I did not know what that was either, not until it became my reality. In a nutshell, my heart did not function at a stable rhythm, and it was much faster than normal during those episodes. Many people have asked me how the tachycardic episodes felt. There is no straightforward way to describe it. It's as if you're running nonstop called to give a presentation in class, or as I'm doing right now with this TED, that you feel with a rapidly beating heart. And for me, some sort of dizziness came in as, as well as chest pain. Unfortunately, this fast heartbeat remained for a long time. Let me break this down. The electrical signals in our heart travel the same way as electricity travels from the power plant to your house. The signal causes the chambers of the heart to contract and pump blood. In my case, there was an additional electrical path. This created the unusually fast heartbeat, given that the electrical impulse made a continuous loop. I experienced bothersome tachycardic episodes, which led to being in an intensive care unit. This was due to the worrisome results from the blood test they had done. Troponin, which is a cardiac enzyme that signals damage in the heart, was much higher than normal. Doctors I then consulted, such as a cardiovascular practitioner and an electrophysiologist, began treating this condition by changing my diet, which mostly entailed excluding foods that contain caffeine. Posteriorly, as this did not work, they alternated doses of medication to see if the tachycardic episodes lessened. A tachycardia that I once had was a more severe one. My pressure had decreased significantly, and after many electrocardiograms were done, I did not have a stable rhythm. Ultimately, I needed to have surgery, as I was getting tachycardias too often that could not be solved with medication. Having gone through these challenging situations, I understood the extent of the difficulties this entailed. It was hard for me, and naturally for my family as well. As I spent some time in pediatric urgent care, I was confused by all the tests they were doing, and the uncertainty of what was happening or was about to happen culminated in a feeling of frustration. I remember perfectly that they took me to a vertical garden they had opened in the hospital. It was a beautiful pathway full of plants, and as the nurse brought me in the wheelchair, she talked to me about the hardships of life and how it is vital to see the good in the bad as well as what you can acquire from your experiences. From my continuous wondering of medical technicalities and desire to understand everything, she knew I wanted to study medicine. In fact, everyone knew, as my mom would not stop telling all the doctors in the hospital. <laughs> that nurse made me realize how much I was truly learning. This was a significant turning point for me, in which everything fell into place. I could not change what was happening to me, but I could change the meaning I gave to it. To this day, it is a moment I come back to. Lessons learned through adversity frequently reveal limitations, patterns, skills, and beliefs that you did not see or appreciate previously. This shift, which raises self-awareness, is significant. In my experience, I had to, or as I like to see it, got to see and experience 
many things that would have never happened if I did not have this condition. When in reanimation centers, I got to see a thoracotomy, the treatment after a heart attack. In urgent care, as well as in standard hospital visits, I was explained how the heart functioned and even told how to read the monitor of a baby as I did my daily labs. Every exam they took, medication they gave me, and surgery, I researched from top to bottom. In a way, this was what calmed me, fully knowing what was happening. Changing my mindset allowed me to cope with this issue. I concluded that, as anomalous as my experience was, it was an opportunity for me to get an approximation of hospitals and the field of medicine that I would not have gotten as in-depth. I regained perspective in such a way that, instead of thinking about the negative side, I marveled at what I learned about medicine, further establishing that I wanted to pursue this as my future career. Certainly, this is a remarkably specific instance of how regaining perspective is worthwhile. It is not a mechanism of changing the circumstance, but rather changing the meaning we give to it, enabling us to gain from it. The yin yang principle underlines that everything exists as an unbreakable duality of contradictory opposites. Equal pairs attract and enhance one another. A proper balance between the two poles must be reached in order to achieve harmony. According to neuroscience, our tendency to focus on information that is negative was passed down to us by our evolutionary ancestors who lived in caves. Timothy J. Bono, PhD, a psychologist and university lecturer, explains that we inherit the genes that predispose us to pay particular attention to those aspects of our environment that could be harmful to us. Furthermore, the amygdala, a brain structure that psychologist Rick Hansen, PhD, refers to as the warning bell of your brain, is also activated by negative emotions. It uses around two-thirds of its neurons to look for unfavorable news. Negative experiences and events are swiftly preserved in memory as the alarm goes off. And yet, positive ones typically need to be kept in mind for a dozen or more seconds. Overall, we experience a greater level of positive experiences than negative ones. Even so, our brain tends to fixate on the negative parts of our lives. Think about it like a road. Driving along an eternally straight paved road would be easy, but monotonous. On the other hand, a varied terrain with curves, unpaved sections, and challenges illuminates an entirely new perspective and allows room for learning. Once you have stepped aside from the idea that positive thinking takes you forward and truly found a balance between those positive and negative thoughts, you can give meaning to the things that happen to you. It is this mindset that opens a path for better coping abilities in our daily lives as well as future happenings. A state of regaining your point of view in order to put things into perspective. Being in a hospital in the circumstance I was in, I could have just as easily let myself get carried away by all that negativity. Today, I understand that it was exactly that, the perspective I gave, which formed me as a person. And thanks to that experience, I confirmed my interest in medicine, the career I want to pursue. This is all that I learned through the medical hardships I experienced. And with this talk, we wish to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.